man. But I hope everyone's doing well. Bless the Lord. Thank you uh, for being here with us. You know, it is, as our pastor has said, it is cold in here in Conover. It's 24 uh, degrees. And it had gotten down to nine to nine degrees last night. And so we're at 24. And I hope it's, uh, you know, a little warmer where you are. Uh, the, the Moody's, I did look at the current temperature for um, Jamaica. Say Kingston was 87. And so I don't know how warm it is. And so we... Uh, they did uh, best us out on this one this time. But bless the Lord. We are talking, we are talking about shattering strongholds uh, today, um, just, just for a moment. It is um, day 358. We're nine days out for a new year. And at my at my workplace. In the beginning of the, the year, um, we do a plan, a development plan. And in that development plan, you state where you are, you list some goals that you'd like to achieve um, that you want to meet before year end. And I had some saving goals, some cash improvement goals. And at the end of the year, as it gets closer to the end of the year, um, you would have a year in review. And in that review, you would list if you met your goals and where you are now. And I felt I felt the need to adopt this year in review, this year in work with review to spiritual growth and Christ likeness. In order to meet those goals at work, you have to you have to cross certain barriers. And so, as it is with our spiritual growth and formation in Christ likeness, we have stronghold barriers that stand in the way of reaching that goal. That goal. And so, these stronghold barriers must be shattered. And so I look back at 2022 and the earlier part in 2022, and I noted God's kindness throughout the year and his faithfulness throughout the year. God is good to us and he is faithful to us. On my phone, at the beginning of the year, I start with January and I go all the way through the year first day, second day, third day, all the way through the year, just thanking God for his kindness every day. If I know your birthday, I put your, your initials in on that day, thanking God for his kindnesses to you. And I just bless God for giving us these days and giving me these days. And so in 2022, I looked back and said, God, you've been faithful. We had the collected prayer session with Sister Sister June Botham. We've had the local prayer session with Sister Joy Moody. We've had so far 51 Bible studies. We've had men's studies. The women have had women's studies. And we see where we are, but yet there are still other spiritual goals that we like to meet and like to get to. And in doing that, we need to smash, we need to shatter, we need to demolish strongholds. Now, Sister Priscilla has read 2 Corinthians 10, four and five for us. And the context of this passage is, and we, talked about Paul defending his apostleship before, but Paul is defending his apostleship against, at the time they had these guys that they called him super apostles. He was defending his apostleship against the super apostles. And he said, listen, nothing is going to stand in the way of my ministry. And see, we all are ministers because 
He said, nothing's gonna stand in the way of my service. In ministry, in ministry, we serve, and ministry um, is another term that he used. Nothing's gonna stand away in for his service to God and his service to them. And he tells the Corinthians, he says, he says, for the weapons of our warfare, these attacks against me, the weapons of our warfare aren't carnal. He said, but they are mighty in God for pulling down what? For shattering, for demolishing strongholds. And the weapons that he's referring to is the weapons of truth, of being from Ephesians 6, from being girded with truth, from, from having on the breastplate of righteousness, for shielding up with the shield of faith, for having on the salvation helmet, and for using the sword of the spirit. See, what the enemy does with strongholds, what the enemy does with strongholds, the enemy tries, you know, we, we, we have um, the verse that says, do not be conformed, but be renewed by your mind for the renewing of your mind. The enemy want, sets up strongholds each each city in those times had strongholds a place of refuge and the enemy wants to put a false place of refuge in our hearts and in our minds against god's true place of refuge for our hearts and for our minds and paul says we tear those down the lies of the enemy that says you're not good enough you're not strong enough you're not smart enough you're not pretty enough you're not whatever enough we tear those strongholds down so where that we can minister and we can get to that point that Christ has destined us to be. We tear down uh, uh, ideas, arguments, philosophies, reasonings, he says in five, and we bring them under the Lordship of Christ. And so that was our primary verse, but for illustration, I want, if you have your Bibles and your phones and your devices, want you to go to Judges 6 and for illustration, uh, il illustrative story, we're going to look at Judges chapter 6 and we're going to see a stronghold shatterer. So Judges 6, actually the book of Judges begins, the book of Judges begins with a phrase that says, after the death of Joshua, after the death of Joshua. So under Joshua, Joshua conquers, he brings in, he conquers the promised land with the Israelites and the Israelites had great success. They were united um, with the exception of the chapter seven, Achan sin. They did really well. Um, they were together. Their moral compass was set. Um, 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 God's word, was prioritized. And then when we come to the book of Judges, when the Israelites are in the promised land, the principle right here, we're all, many times we strive for a place, for a thing that we think is gonna bring that satisfaction and that fulfillment, but yet it doesn't. The Israelites made it to the promised land, yet they lost their moral compass they based their behavior on human opinion instead of God's moral word and solid unchanging word. And what it did, it brought them into this cyclical, they would, they were complacent, they would sin, um, God would send an oppressor, uh, they would be oppressed, they would cry out. After they cried out, God would rescue them. And the whole book of Judges, it just continues like that and from chapters 3 verse 7 all the way to chapter 16 there are 12 judges six major six minor there are 12 judges that are represented as um, military leaders that bring um, um, rescue for the israelites and so one of those major judges was a guy named gideon and gideon's name means mighty warrior Gideon's name means mighty warrior and what we'll do is we'll pick up the story in Judges 6 at verse 11 in verse 11 
It says, now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terabith tree, which was in Oprah, which belonged to Joash, the Abizrite, while his son in Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. Israel at this time was in, was, was in a situation so bad that they had built themselves caves. The earlier part of, 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 of chapter six said they had built themselves caves, dens, and strongholds, which are in the mountains. See, a stronghold, a stronghold, Midian was a stronghold, and not only Midian, was the Midianites a stronghold, but the Midianites um, caused the Israelites to build strongholds. Instead of relying on God, they were trying to build strongholds for themselves. And Christ came, and it says the angel of the Lord, and they say the messenger of the Lord, the Malak of Yahweh, Christ came and he sat down under the terabith true tree. Jesus, note principle, Jesus always comes at the right time. He knows where we are. He meets us where we, in our need. He meets us in our need. The scripture says that, that he uh, comes to those who are brokenhearted and contrite in spirit he always comes at the right time and the angel of the lord came to gideon at just the right time and he called him and he said to him the lord is with you mighty man of valor verse 3 says gideon said that it, look if god is with us then why is all these things happening to us why am i why am i pressing um um this this wheat why am i threshing wheat in a wine press he was hiding from the Midianites because the Midianites had gotten to the point that they would come and they would ransack and they would plunder and they would take their produce. And the, the, the scripture said that, um, that they would do this and they would impoverish the Israelites. And the word I found that for the impoverishing the Israelites, it said that they, it would make small make thin have you ever have, have you ever had something that come against you that humiliates you that makes you small that makes you thin that embarrasses you then that could be a stronghold and our goal is to shatter strongholds and i just highlighted some points and so it's a long story. Gideon, probably Gideon and Samson take up, as far as the judges, take up more chapters than any of the other judges throughout. And, G and Gideon's story actually lasts from chapter six to chapter eight. And then if you want to consider his legacy and, and his posterity in chapter nine, it carries on where Abimelech, his son, it, it, we see some things that he does in chapter nine, which a stronghold had come into his life, but I highlighted some verses and we'll we'll kind of kind of hit those. Um, and it says, and the Lord said, surely I will be with you and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Gideon went on um, to, to uh, talk with the Lord. Uh, it was the appearance of Christ. And we think that his fleece tests were the only tests that he had, but here, he had the Lord wait on him and he said, if you would wait on me here, and he gave the Lord a test and Christ actually consumed the offering that he had. But in verse 24, it says that, so Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it the Lord is peace. Gideon realized that Christ is peace, that the Lord is his righteousness. He, Jehovah Shalom, he was able to build an altar there. And so not only did he build an altar, but in 25, it says that he came and he tore down an altar. So he built an altar. When we shatter in strongholds, we, 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 we establish that Christ is our peace and that allows us to go out and crash and demolish and shatter the strongholds. But it came in verse 25 that he said that he shattered a, 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 an altar and that, that he shattered his father's altar and he tore down the altar of Baal. Some strongholds uh, uh, occur in the family. It's, it's strongholds that need to be shattered 
that are that 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 come in the family that has to do with the family and and Gideon shattered the first thing he does was shatter a, fa a, a stronghold in the family and then not only that then he rebuilt an altar he, he he built an altar he tore down the altar and he rebuilt an altar on a rock and strangely enough uh, and interesting enough that rock of Christ is called a stronghold so God is showing Gideon that his 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 stronghold that his fortress that his refuge is in Christ himself on which Christ said I will be with you and we know the story the story of Gideon of how he um defeated the Midianites with 300 men he defeated the Midianites with a pitcher he uh defeated the Midianites with um a trumpet he defeated the Midianites with uh torches he had trumpets he had pitchers he had torches he had 300 men and God said he was going to do that so Gideon and the Israelites could know with certainty that it wasn't them who done it but that it was God working through them that done it and I noticed that as Gideon not only Gideon didn't stop right there when we're talking about t tearing down strongholds and shattering strongholds we have to go all the way we don't stop until the stronghold is shattered Gideon had taken care of Oreb and Zeb and Gideon pursued and he kept going until he got Zalmunna and Zeba he went all over the countryside until he destroyed the Midianite stronghold. Gideon's story is a story about hope. Gideon's story is a story about God's peace. Gideon's story is a story about faith. Gideon's story is a story about shattering, shattering strongholds. And you know, um, shattering strongholds is is less about doing and more about being and becoming christ wants us to finish well christ wants us to live this life christ wants us to grow in christ likeness to grow in um maturity um, that's a goal a goal of, of of mine to grow to more christ likeness and he wants us to do that. And, and, and in order for me to do that, some strongholds, uh, all, these strongholds have to be have to be shattered. Um, at the end of Gideon's life, after all that Gideon had done, see Gideon's story, I think that Gideon's story um, was a well known story. And the reason I say Gideon's story, the story of the Midianites was a well known story. I noticed that in um, Psalm 83, they talked about this story. Not only in Psalm 83, in Isaiah 10, Isaiah, Isaiah lists two stories, and he's talking about the deliverance of God. And as the Israelites were in uh, uh, captivity, he talked about two stories that, 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 that referenced the deliverance of God. And one was the Red Sea, and the other one was Judges 6, the Midianite story. And then all, after all that Gideon had done and all, all the the success uh, that he had and rest that came um, um, after his leadership judges chapter eight says that gideon built an ephod and after all he done he took gold from the israelites and he made an ephod verse chapter 8 verse 27 and it says that he set it up in his city and all Israel played the harlot with it there. And it became a snare to Gideon. It became a noose. It became a hook to not only to Gideon and to his house. See, the goal is more so about becoming something than doing something. And the goal is, is to finish well. And I don't know, I don't know, you know, and I, judge, judgmental. And I look at Gideon's in in chapter eight and it's God's prerogative. But I did notice that in Hebrews 11, 
See, God's not finished. He's never lost a battle. Um, he who began a good work in you and me and him will finish it uh, until completion. And I notice in Hebrews chapter 11 that it said that, and what more shall I say from verse 32? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets. See, Gideon is listed in the heroes and heroines of, of, of faith in chapter 11. It said, he, we, through faith, he subdued kingdoms and worked righteousness, and they obtained promises, and they stopped the mouths of lions. And so shattering strongholds is about becoming. It's about, it's about becoming, it's about the exchange for us, um, as Kenneth Boyle says, is the, the uh, identity exchange, our old man for the new man of Christ. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and nevertheless I live and the life I live, I live through faith through the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's about that exchange. It's about our new identity. You know, Gideon says, I'm the weakest of my family and I'm in the weakest tribe. Yet Jesus said, yet the angel said, you are a mighty warrior. It's our, about our identity in him. Shattering, shattering strongholds is about our discipline. And so how do, how, how do we shatter strongholds? How do we become more Christ-like? Uh, how do we reach these goals? And it's through it's through disciplines. It's through through Christ and Christ working through us, and prayer and fellowship and confession and solitude and silence and service and worship. We talked about worship. It's about disciplines. It's about dropping off and getting rid of the old and building up the new. It's about shattering strongholds. And as we close out and as we leave. Um, 2022 and as we transition into 2023 let's make this a, a, a priority to reach those goals those spiritual goals and those spiritual growth goals in christ let's make this a priority and to shatter the strongholds that we know that are present in our lives and we know which ones those are he's not finished with us yet he who began a good work in us will complete it till the end and he hasn't lost a soul in Jesus name. Amen.